Welcome to my channel. I've been doing a series of videos, and I've only done two, where I'm showing you how the balance sheet, income statement, and statement of cash flows are connected. I'll link it in the description. In the first video I made, we just had a few simple transactions for the company in 2020. Then in 2021, we had some more transactions. One of the transactions was purchasing a $10,000 machine to help us make slippers. And we depreciated that machine over five years, so $2,000 a year. So quick definition of depreciation. Depreciation represents how much of an asset's value has been used up. Depreciating assets helps companies earn revenue from an asset while expensing a portion of its cost each year. The asset is in use. So think of the balance sheet as storage. It, it's not being used. The stuff on a balance sheet is just sitting in storage, not being used by anyone, just waiting to be used, collecting dust. The stuff on the income statement was taken out of storage, off the balance sheet, and put into production, put into use for the business. Even cash is just sitting there in storage on the balance sheet until you actually use it to buy something. So we bought a $10,000 machine. And the reason we didn't expense it, put the entire $10,000 on the income statement in the first year is because we have to come up with a useful life for the machine. And we came up with a five year useful life. We said the machine should be good for five years and give us a lot of use. And we put $2,000 in the first year on the income statement as an expense. We're gonna also put the $2,000 depreciation expense on the income statement the next four years. Once we depreciate the asset in whole, we can't take any more depreciation costs. So let me show you a couple ways companies can do funny accounting and manipulate the numbers. And they could do it in other ways besides depreciation, but I'm gonna show you a couple ways using depreciation. So we put a $2,000 expense based on the value of our asset depreciating over five years. And you can see that we had gross profit of $20,000. Then we had a minus of $2,000 expense. That means our operating profit was $18,000 and we paid 20% of taxes on our operating profits. So our taxes is $3,600, our net income is $14,400. What if this was a public company, just for example? Right now it's private, but say it was public, there was a thousand shares. That means earnings per share is $14.40. Say for example, you as the manager of the company, you're just an employee, the owners are the investors, you're just an employee, and in your contract, it said if you beat the analyst estimates for earnings per share in 2021, then we'll give you a $10,000 bonus. And you saw you weren't gonna beat it. And say the analyst predicted around $15 earnings per share for your company, and you saw you're at 1440, what you can do is depreciate this asset less. So say you dropped it to $1,000, and now you see your net income went up $800. Because before I changed it, operating profit was $18,000, and we paid 20% of taxes, $3,600. But if I drop the depreciation to $1,000, that eighteen dollars goes up $1,000. Now we have to pay 20% on that additional $1,000, so we have an extra $800 of net income, and now our earnings per share beat the analyst estimates, and we get a $10,000 bonus. It's just that easy, right? But what do you say to the auditors or investors if they say, how come you depreciated this asset over 10 years? Don't you think it's gonna only last like five or six years? Why did you depreciate it over 10 years? You can just say, well, based on our analysis, and how much we're gonna use the machine. We just feel it's probably gonna last us about 10 years. And I'm sure you can justify it and come up with different reasons and it would probably be fine. Let's go back to the original $2,000 of depreciation. You see our net income is 14,400 and look at our cash, 66,400. Now, if we wanted to conserve cash, there's a way to do it through depreciation. Depreciation is an expense and the higher your expenses, the lower your operating profit and the less taxes you pay. So let me show you an extreme example. Say we increase depreciation of $5,000. We say this machine would last about two years. And you see in the original equation, 
we had sixty-six thousand four hundred cash at the end of the year because we had a minus of thirty-six hundred dollars in taxes we paid to the government. But what if we increased it to five thousand? Watch the sixty-six four hundred. Now it goes up to sixty-seven thousand. We added six hundred dollars of cash just by increasing our expenses. When you increase expenses, you lower your profits and you have to pay less in taxes. And for really large companies that have lots of assets and lots of different things besides appreciation, they could play with the numbers within the legal limits and come out to zero net income and pay no taxes and save a lot of money. Or they could have tons of net income and beat the analyst estimates. Whatever they want to do, they can manipulate the numbers to make it that way. And in our case, if the auditors said, how come you depreciated this machine over two years? I've seen other companies depreciate over five years. You might say, we're a new startup. We're going to be using this machine every single minute of the day. This is going to be our main source for generating slippers. We're going to put this machine through hell and we think it's going to only last two years. So we had to depreciate at $5,000 a year. And the auditors would be like, okay, fine. At least you have a reason. So you may be thinking, why would someone do this? Why wouldn't someone make the best decisions for a long-term growth of the company? Because most people are thinking short-term. Anybody who runs a public company is just an employee of the shareholders. And within their contract, they usually have these stipulations and they need to hit these goals because they want to make money and they want to keep their jobs. Most people are thinking short-term. They want the company to look as great as it can in the time they're there. They don't really care so much about 10, 15 years because in their mind, they might not even be at the company in 10, 15 years. They want to get the big bonus. They want to get the praise from the investors, the analysts. So they're doing things for their own benefit. So I hope you learned something new. Let me know what you think in the comments. I reply to all comments. Thanks for watching.